Hello, everyone. My name is Sujin Lee. My pronoun is she and her. So I, and then first of all, thank you for joining today in beautiful snow day. I really enjoy snow today. And yes, so I'm the open data ambassador. So, and also I'm working for the city government. So I'm currently working on the mayor's office for economic opportunity. So I like get professionally committed to open data a lot from my job. So I'm really happy to join this section just to teach about like a little bit more of the open data. So let's get started with like the today's the agenda. And so this is like yeah, what we are going to cover for the next one hour. Start from the very brief history of the New York City open data. And also I'm going to do like live demo on the open data website. So like yeah, how to actually the using the data and including some visualization on the open data platform. And also I'm going to introduce a few of the tools that using the open data set. And also, yeah, I will re we reserve enough time if anyone has the like yeah, have the questions and then needs more of the support. So this is the our the agenda for today. And yes, and then this material, like yeah, the material for this training was co-created by the Office of the Data Analytics at the New York City Office of the Technology and Innovation and the Civic Technology Organization, the Beta NIC. And yes, so I will get started today's section with a brief history of the New York City open data. So defining open data can be pretty simple, so making government data accessible to the public. So because of the, its connection to the data, open data is often like a thought of as a like 21st century phenomenon, one that a company like, yeah, the growing importance of the data in our everyday lives and stems from the increased creations and use of the data by governments both in New York and around the world. So, but in fact, there is a long history of the similar efforts to make the government more accountable and transparent. So to be better understand how we got here, we are going to briefly touch on some like yeah, developments, the major milestones that lead to the New York City's the open data. So let's start with the today. So what does the open data look like today, like yeah, as of the today? So the public data is available about nearly every dimension of the, our life. And this photo is il illustrated some New York City open data showing how the physical environment surrounded us mapped to the like, yeah, open data set. So like, yeah, for example, like uh, this, like locations of the recycling bins across the New York City is available from the Department of the Sanitation, and also like yeah, all the complaints and the violation on the building, like reported by the public and the anyone, is also like available in the open data set, like yeah, managed by Department of the Buildings, and then all the restaurant inspection. You know that the ABC, like the inspection wizard on the restaurant, that data is also available from the Department of the Health and the Mental Hygiene in the open data. So like, yeah, almost all the part, like dimension of the this photo is available, is part of the data points in the open data. So like, yeah, and then, so like, has here I so that like yeah thank you for all the introduction yourself but I see that like some of you already use the open data for your work so is anyone like yeah feel free to chat like yeah what's your like favorite data set in the New York City so like yeah and then like yeah if like if you have haven't used the, any like NIC open data set yet and if you could know anything about the New York City what would you like to know? Like, yeah, what data set you are looking for in the New York City? So, like, yeah, feel free to add the chat. Oh, uh, yes, the three data set. Yeah, I'm going to, like, yeah, 
share this like three the interactive the map with from the three sensors there yeah, that is one of the, my favorite data set to okay yeah thank you matthew the traffic crashes uh pluto data yes this is the amazing yeah data set okay I see that like yeah, today, like yeah, many audience are yeah, interested in the like infrastructure related the data set. So yeah, thank you for sharing. And let's now move to the history. So the roots of the New York City open data movement can be traced back to the late 19th century and the progressive era of the government reform. So in New York City, these progressive the reforms produced an important milestone. It's called the city record. So it's the new publication to share the city notices and then like purchasing or hiring. So all those information is released through the city record. And this city record is like, yeah, is still existing. Now it's available both in the print and then online. And Jeji, can you put the link? Like, yeah, so now this like uh, is, you can, if you go to the, that like link, Jeji share, you can see the current versions of the city record. And uh, this slide, this is the, and this is from the like old, early edition of the city record. And, and then now you can still, you can find the scans of the, this early edition of the city record on the internet through the New York University's the city record project. So now like early and then current version, everything is available in the online. And then the next, oops, sorry. So, and now we are jumping to the like 1960s. And in 1967, the federal government like the passed the Freedom of the Information legislation, which you called the FOIL. And the New York State law is also was passed a few years later. So FOIL makes government information available upon the like request. So if you are looking for some data owned by the government and then you can ask for it and if the data exists and can be shared, it will be shared with you. So in many cases, the requester is the only person ever to see the record. So with this FOIL, most government information is available if someone asks for it. So at that time, like yeah, around 1916s, and then this idea is uh, like revolutionary, like the concepts. And then, yes. Sorry. And then several decades later, in 1993, the New York City released its public data directory. So the idea is to make the information available through the FOIL for the past 30 years, make them more accessible by providing a list of the data set and the corresponding the agency name. So you can see the table of the contents. So each the city agency and then what kind of the data set is already available on the like yeah public through the FOIL. So like yeah, so this is like in contrast with the FOIL request where the person making the request generally needs to know in advance what they are looking for. So with this public data directory, someone could now see a listing of the data was already available at each agency and then read the description of what it contains. And then this is the one of the example from the department of the building. And then I get the complaints and then what's the like, description of the data set and then what data fields they are collecting. So it's basically like a New York City compiled or available data in the one place. And then that's the public data directory. So, and then interesting, like some of the city system is really old and then the database outlined in this directory is still existing today. So with this long history of the BB the movement in 20, uh, the 2012, the city of the New York finally passed the open data law. So while many cities have the open data as a policy or executive order, the New York City's the law guarantees that the public will permanently assess this information regardless of the mayor and the admi any like yeah, administration. 
So a key difference between open data and the FOIA is that no one needs to ask for the information. It's made public by default and shared with everyone by the default. So as of the now, the New York City open data contains more than 3,000 data sets and billions of the rows of the data and is managed by the New York City open data team houses and then the New York City Office of the Technology and Innovation. And this like wealth of the information is only possible thanks to the network of the about 100 open data coordinators spread throughout the city government. And every city agency's office or like the commissioner, including elected officials, has an open data coordinator. So and then these open data coordinators are like yeah, aware of the, their agencies, the data well, so responsible for working with the New York City open data to identify structure and document publishing and updating and the share the, their agencies open the data set. So this is really brief history of the like yeah the open data and then now I will walk you through the New York City open data website in the next 20 minutes to show you how to find the data set you want and how to play with it and then how to visualize the data. So let me actually like yeah move to the website. Can you see the website? Yes. Okay. Sage, can you please the put the link to the people? Okay, great. So you can so yeah. And from now, like I'm going to the live, live demo on the website, but you can also like yeah, follow like my direction or play yourself. So and then so this is the landing pages of the open data set, and then there are like Two ways you can search for the data that you want. So first, there is the search bar. You can using this search bar for a topic you are interested in, or you can using the data like well, data on the tab navigation menu if you need more structure to find the data set. So let's go to the, this data menu on the tab navigation, and then. Now you can see like open data set are grouped in the multiple ways as you see here. So like, yeah, there is the new data set sections and also what's the most popular data set and also data set by some like yeah, the policy or domain like categories. And also there is the data set group by the agency. So like whichever you feel like comfortable, easy to navigate it, you can using this data, like yeah, the data menu. And for today's classes, like yeah, let's look at the very specific data set. Then let's by typing 311 data set. Like yeah, we're gonna using the 311 data set for today's the section. And then Let's put the 311 and then click the search bar. And then you can see the list of the data set, the related the 311. And then today we like, yeah, going to using the first wizard 311 service request from the 2010 to the present. And then before that, like yeah, 311, actually like five days ago, it was 20th anniversary of the like 311 request if anyone see there is many press like uh, related like uh, to celebrate 311's the 20th anniversary so like yeah if anyone does know the 311 the 311 is a city's the front door tool where you can get the assistance and then general information outside of the emergency situation so it really covers most of the issues that you can imagine from like noise complaints or like, yeah, what to do when I lose my first certificate. So like all kind of the issues, like, yeah, you can get the help and the assistance from the different city agencies. And it is open 24 hours a day and then like 365 days a year and available in over 175 languages. And for roughly like uh, yeah, more than 3,600 different government services. And then 311 is accessible via your 
phone, like application, website, or like, yeah, and then you can call the 311. So, and then actually like, yeah, I also said, I really want to share this report if anyone is interested. As I said, like yeah, five days ago, there was the 20th anniversary of the 311. And then the, the mayor's like New York City mayor office, they publishing this like yeah, very official, like the state of the NIC 311. And then they put the, some like very high level of the like yeah what was the number of the course, number of the contacts for the last 20 years. And then it's really fun, like a report and then very quick, like summary statistics. What's the top five service requests from the New York City, like yeah, the resident and like between like yeah, two different years. And then the, but the most fascinating part is like, yeah, this, List of the some questions is which is hard to answer for the some of the operators and then yes so somebody like yeah and what is what's the best pizza near me like yeah so this was really like a fun like a report to me so I hope more people can check out this report and then let's going back to the three one one search. So this 311 service request is, as you said, from the 2010 and then up to today. And then this is like daily update from the 311. And then this data set like, yeah, stored all the requests from the, like, yeah, all different, like, yeah, the, from the different, like, application, work course. And then, so it's really stored all the single service request from the resident. So, and then, this page, if you click the data set and then every data set is has the same like format of the this the this the landing pages. And from here, and then this pages is really has a lot of the essential information before before you diving into the data. So if you are like a data person, you like working a lot with the data, you know that like yeah. There is like, yeah, you need to first understand like, yeah, when is the latest update, what kind of the information data field are there. So all those like information is already available in here. So let's start like, yeah, I, what I recommend is like, yeah, every like this, the pages, and then this part is the description of the data set. So it really give you high level what this data set has like information. So, and then this one, and so first one is like checking this description. And then another important information is like, yeah, this like, this update, yeah, how often, what's the frequency of the data updates, whether this is like updated daily or when is the last updated the data set. So based on the like, the question, the data research question you have, you might have the, like a, how much like a, the up, like latest the data you have. And then some of the data set is like, can be like a behind, like a, it's updated like a year ago or like a few months back. So like you need, you might want to check in when the is the latest updated the data in this one. And also this information, it also usually like, yeah, it's good to know like uh, how often it's updated and then whether this like update is happening like automatically updated or this involves a manual update. So all this data is like yeah, information available in here. And then the other, the third part is, and then every data set has this attachment, which is the data dictionary. So data dictionary is like, uh, what is the columns and then so what's the column names and then what's the definition of the data set? So any context you should know and then what's the history of the like kind of the like changing log, what's the history of the data set? And then so all the information are available through the, these data dictionaries. And then the last part is about this one and then how big this data set. So like what's the number of the rows and then how many columns are there? And some of the, and then 
just like, yeah, this is like good to know. Is that some of the open data set are really big as this 311 data set. So if you export everything in the Excel spreadsheet, like some of the data that is like cannot save in the one Excel spreadsheet, there is the limit in the Excel spreadsheet. So it's also like, yeah, good, it's good to know how big in the data set. And then the last part is like, yeah, the there is the, this is like kind of the preview of the data dictionary. So you can see all the columns in this data set with the, the definitions. So this is also like, yeah, before downloading the data dictionary, I usually check this list of the columns to verify whether this data set has the information that I'm looking for. And then, so you can see what, the fields are available in here. And yes, and then this is also like preview of the data table. So this one, the first page is like, yeah, it's really user-friendly and then has the all the essential information you need to check before like on the analyze the data. So I highly recommend like yeah, spending a few minutes on these pages. So let's Going back to the slide. So let me see if I missed anything. Yes. So this is the like, yeah, very quick recap of the what you can find in the first pages. And then like, yeah, read the title and then descriptions. And then when is this data is sufficiently current? And then do I understand the data set enough to start to analyze the data? And then how big this data set. So this is all these four like the questions in that you can check with the, the first pages. And then let's going back to the site. And let's really get started to like yeah, see the data on the open data platform. And here there is the, on the top right corner, there is the view data button. So if you click the view data, this is where like yeah, the site leads to you to the, the data view. And yes, let me, if you are playing, playing like yeah, working by yourself, I like, yeah, let's go to the switch to the grid view this one. And so this is the data set of the 311. And you can see like, yeah, there is, as we see before, there are like a lot of the around like 41 columns are available in the open data set. So each column is like explain like some characteristics of the, the service request from the when this request is created and then which agency are like is assigned for this request. And then, so, okay. Let me ask very quick question. Is it has anyone can like, yeah, can anyone notice how many roles are available in this data set? Anyone can notice the information? Great, like, yeah. Sheridan, like, yeah, thank you for answering. Yeah, here, like, yeah, in the right, the bottom right corner, you can see this is around, like, yeah, almost more than, like, yeah, 33 million record is, like, yeah, has been coming to the 311 from the 2010 up to today, up to yesterday. So this is all there. So this data set is really big data set. And then, so what, like, here, what we need is, you can, yeah, we cannot scroll all these millions of the roles in this platform. So first, like, yeah, the most useful tools on this platform is like you, there is the filter function. So you like, yeah, what what kind of the, like out of the all these 311 service requests and then like what I'm really looking for and then what information I need. So you want to using this filter function to narrow down the roles you are interested in. So like, yeah, let me introduce this filter function. So if you click the, this filter and then there is the this interface, you can like, yeah, as imagine like yeah, you, using the filter in the access spreadsheet. So you can select the columns 
and then what like values are like yeah you want to like yeah using for the like narrow down the rules so here so let me let's start how we want to narrow down the rules let me think has anyone knows what community board you are leading is the like i want to start specific community board to narrow down the these rules so we can focusing on the one community board if anyone want to share their community board cb5 thank you and is it brooklyn or manhattan or Kings? great bronx okay so let's first start with the bronx community board five so here you can see the all the list of the columns you can filtering out so here is we have the community board and then is you can zero five and then bronze and then click the this checkbox and then now is the filtering the rules and see here now like yeah, there were like yeah, 33 million reports but now it's like a reduced to like yeah six around like yeah 600 like thousand the record so and the other one is like yeah so and also you can add more the filters so now we narrow down bronze community board five and now i can want to do what we can do is like we can also narrow down the time frame so it's covered from 1990 so let's focusing on the more the recent one so if you click the creative the day and then what you can do is and also this operator you can select maybe is after and then let's focusing on this year so let's going back to the 2023 like yeah January 1st 2023 so this is like yeah you select the record is created after January 1st this year so you can see it reduced even further to the 13,000 record and and then this is how you can keep like yeah adding the filters and then even here another many people are using is like agencies or complaint types but uh, let's pick the agency then like i see the nipd so in the here so let me try to using nipds so service request that assigned to the nipd so now we have like yeah 100 88,000 record in here. Oops, so actually maybe it's not selected. Okay. So yeah, you can see like a you, yeah. I, I sometimes forgot, but like yeah, after you selecting this filter, you should click the, this checkbox. So now we have the, this number of the rules. We like, yeah, reduce a lot of the information. So this, so this list of the around like, yeah, 13,000 record is like yeah, the all the service request created after January 1st this year in the Bronx Community Board 5, which is assigned to the specifically NIPD. So this filter function is really useful when you're working with the large data set where you have very specific research question. So, and then you can using this filter function to narrow the, the, the data set. And then after that, what can be also even useful is there is the export function. So if you click the export function, and then if you want to take this data out the, like yeah, your local machine, your laptop, and then you can export this data set in very different format, like yeah, in the Excel or JSON, and different like yeah, XML, and then you can play like you can take down this raw data, and then you can make your own report or creative data visualization with other like yeah, the tools. So if you we click the CSV file, and then it downloaded in the your local machine, and then so this is like the 
the filter and then export and then the major functions in here. And, and then let's now move to the like the visualization part. So I'm also like a personally really super visual thinker. So just looking at the table is not really helpful in like examining like what's going on across the neighborhood and then like yeah. So it's still like a lot of the information. It's not really intuitive. So and then now and then also I know that like, uh, there are many different data visualization tool outside of the open data. But open uh, on the open data platform, you can quickly come up with the simple visualization. So like yeah, and then so I can show you the visualization tools on the website. So here, so we learn the filter and the export. And then, so there is also visualize the button here. So if you click the, this one and you can launching the new visualization. So, and then this is like the visualization tool on the open data website. And here, and also especially like, it depends on the data set size, but as you see, like 311 data set is like, yeah, and is really large data set. So like, first of all, you always like want to like filtering the data set to make like a smaller enough to make the visualization. So as you see, so this is the format and then this is the preview of the data table. And then you can see this one is like, like pull the, all the rows from the 301 data set. It's not the pre-filtered where you end up in the last pages. So here there is the filter function again. So you first need to filter the data again on these pages before making the visualization. And now let's try to the other like examples. And usually I like, yeah, it's people have the different way to start the data visualization, but I usually start with the like just very simple question. So let's say like now today, like my question is like, what's the most popular complaints in this week across the New York City? So all the New York City, what's the most popular complaints this week? So that's the question. And then that's how I want to make the, the visualization to find like what's the top three complaints, top five complaints types. So, and then to do that one, and then let's start with the filter and then you can click the add filter button. And then, as I said, like I want to focus on this week. So we start with this created date columns. And then if you open the, this data and then you can put the specific date, date range, but there is also like this one is pretty like yeah, useful, the relative the data date and then here you can select yesterday this week but let's start with the, this week click this one and then apply and then let's check what happened this table as you see like yeah it's reduced into the like yeah, to the 15,000 record which is manageable for the visualization and then here what I said, like, yeah, what's the most popular complaint this month across the city? So I want to see using the old New York City data. So I think for now, this filter is enough. And then what you should do is like, so, and then here in the dimension, you need to select the columns that you want to group by this, like, yeah, the service request. So this table is, list of like a list of the order service request. But my question is what's the top complaint types? So I want to I want to count number of the like service request by complaint type. So this dimension is you need to select the columns that you want to group by the one. So here there is the complaint types. So if you select this complaint types, and yes, so it gives you the bar chart. And so this is so this is where you can select the your like how you want to aggregate the data. And then this chart is what kind of the chart type you want to use. Like, yeah, do you want pie chart? 
for a bar chart and then like, yeah let's try the column chart and then see and then if we increasing this y-axis and then you can see all the description of the complaints so it's like yeah automatically sorted by number of the the count of the service request so it's you can see easy we can easily find what's the top complaint. So for this week, across the all the New York City, top complaint is the illegal parking. And then the second is followed by heat hot water related the complaint. So this is all list of the like yeah, complaints in the New York City. So and then so it's compared to the, the table and then it's much easier to like yeah, summarize the information with the visualization. And then so and then the other way is so yeah we can do some other thing like yeah let's try this week we can add the filter and then let's narrow down to the neighborhood and community board Here's my community board. I'm living in the Queens. And then applying that one. And then, yeah, it reduced a lot of the information. And then compared to the like citywide, like citywide, the top complaint was the illegal parking. But my community board, like, yeah, top complaint is like, yeah, the noise complaint from the commercial. So that's how, like, yeah. As you see, yeah, using the filter, and then, and then you can like, yeah, increasing the timelines, and then see more in like, yeah, longer time period. So you can see this like dynamically, like, yeah, you can select the data, and then using the different the chart types here, and then another cool information is. This you can have the like yeah, we have the map function here. So let's what we can do is here in, instead of the dimension, like yeah, in, in, in the dimension column, instead of the complaint type, if there is any geospatial one, let's see, let me this one. I yeah, let me actually open the map. I previously created like this one. Can you see the full screen of this one? Yes. So this is like, yeah, creating map is uh, taking a little of the time. So I like, yeah, pre-filtered and then making the map. So like, yeah, the, this visualization also has the map function. So even like more intuitive. So this one is what I selected is like, yeah, so it's, same filter in my first example i selected like this week complaints and then this is like a, how the complaint this the that location is where the service requests are made and then so and then this is the order table so you can see where it's more intuitively across the new york city and then this color is if i open the legend I think I like, yeah, this color is decided by types of the complaints. So like, yeah, you see like here's like noise complaints and the illegal parkings. And then like, yeah, this illegal parking, the red one is across the city. So this is like, yeah, how you can create it, the map on the open data and then Okay, so this is what we covered most of the like a visualization part. And then it's going back to the, the slide. Oh, sorry. Okay, so this the last like a part is like a, we going to introduce, there are a lot of the really cool tools like yeah, developed by city agency or like independent developers or like a yeah, civic organization. So there are many tools like yeah, powered by the open data. So like, yeah, so I'm going to introduce just a few subset of the tools that use the open data. 
So the first one is the New York City's the NIC map site. And then actually, let me go. So this is like many other tools, like maps and tools are created by city agency to make their, their data is more accessible to the public. And then most of the information is like, yeah, where the like social services are located, like, yeah. So actually, let me go to the site here. So this is like, yeah, the, they like, yeah, basically created all the maps. They're powered by the open data set. So it's like the vaccine finders. And then there is, uh, this is about like the zonings and the land using. And then there's many different one. And then here you can, yeah, there is the pre-K program finders. And then like, yeah, food assistance, like where all the like, yeah, food, the pantries and then community kitchens are located. But here, let me actually introduce my, oops, favorite data set. Okay, it works. And so this is the New York City's the tree map. And then this is like a developed by the Department of the Park and Recreations. And this is like, a, I believe this one is going back to the, there was like three census survey in 2015. And then, and then like after that, like yeah, every a few years, New York City Park staffs and then volunteers, they keep tracking all the like yeah, the three census and then like yeah, data across the city. So if let's, and then this one is where you can find like each trace the information. So let's, this is really cool. I really love this one. And then now like, yeah, wherever I visited New Park and then I using this map to know about the, the trace not name. So let me, let's go to the, my favorite park in Queens in Austria Park. And yes. So for example, you can like uh, zoom in your favorite park, your neighborhood park. And then if you click any of the, this, that and then this one gives you like yeah where what's the information around this tree what's the tree id number this created by parks official ids from the park and then this order like ecological benefits and then what's the activities are going on so and then this is like yeah it's you see all the street and then park data is available under this one. So I found this is really cool. And then that's going back. Yeah, open the, this one. So you can explore more. There is really a lot. So I highly recommend spend some time on this one. And then the next one is population fact finder. So this is like, is Population Fact Finder is developed by cities, the Department of the City Planning. And then it's a like dashboard, like it's showing the population profiles that display like demographic, social, and then economic, and then like the housing data. So it's all underlying data is the US Census Bureau and then American Community Survey data. So, and then like, yeah, and then so Department of the City Planning make the census data more accessible to the public through the, this dashboard. And then this one is also really useful. And then, and then this is the population fact finder, the landing pages. And then currently is like, yeah, available 2020 census data. And then here, what you first need to do is there are different types of the geographic level. So like yeah, how you like yeah, define the neighborhood, like yeah, is like there is a community district, which is equivalent to the community board, most of the cases. And then there is the neighborhood population. And this is like census prep. This is the like yeah, the the second granular, the geographic unit that used by Census Bureau. So you first need to choose what kind of the geographic level, neighborhood level. So maybe we most of people like yeah, familiar with the, this community district, which is like yeah, is close to the community board. 
And then you need to select one of the neighborhood. This time, let's select Upper East Side. And if you click the, this one, it gives you a very high level of the number. What's the number of the population? What's the number of the housing unit? And then if you click the view data, and then it gives you more like yeah, the data set. So here, how it like, yeah, so it's the like population and then like population by age and then population by race, Hispanic, like yeah, race and then ethnic city group and then housing occupancy of one. So here's like, yeah, this like, and then there is another good thing is this, the first column is the selected neighborhood. We just selected like Upper East one. And then the second column is the compare reason group. So this one is like compared by New York City, the total city wide level. But here you can select right now by default is compared to the New York City. But what you can do is I want to compare my neighborhood compared to the, my borough. So now we are looking at the Upper East Side, but I want to compare in like a borough level in the Manhattan. So here, what you can do is let's go to the race ethnic city. So this is like yeah, in Upper West, in the Upper East Side, what's the like the race, race ethnic city, the compositions by like race ethnic city, and then like 88% yeah, of the population in the Upper East Side are like yeah, identified as like Hispanic Latino, but compared to the Manhattan, like yeah, in Manhattan, like 20, almost 24% of the population identified as like yeah, Hispanic and the Latino. So you can see how my neighborhood, like the composition of the population by race and ethnicity are differ from the like borough level or citywide level. So this is like, yeah, you can quickly compare the demographic information. And also here is the download function here. So you can download this data set in the Excel spreadsheet. So you can take away this data to your computer. So, and then this one is also really nice, the tools or by the, the federal open data. And then the other one is the, yeah, this is the Zola is a, like a yeah, dashboard. This is also built, maintained by city planning. And this one is really showing the zoning regulations. So where is the commercial district? Where is the, like, yeah, the manufacturing, residential, so, and then where, like, yeah, now, like, yeah. So, they, all those, like, yeah, the joining information you can find in this one. This one is also great. And then, yeah, this one is also, like, yeah, this one, I want to introduce this one. So, this is Open Data Project Gallery is where, you can find the like really new tools that use the NIC open data created by the public. So it's not by city agency, it's created by the public. And then it's, they are like, yeah, created this one by like activists to advocate, advocate like uh, yeah, for the changes to our city council government or any like by teachers to build some analytics skills in the like high school classroom. So those like all different like yeah, publics, the activities are like, yeah, they can share their work in this open data gallery. So, and then you can see all this like cool work in the open data gallery. And then also if you are interested you can submit your project and then we are really encouraging others like to do. So Jesse, do you have the submission form? Yes, thank you. So like, yeah, if you, after this Open Data Week, you created something really cool tool, you can submit your project here. So we have more gallery, like a longer galleries in here. So, and then what's the next one? Oh uh, yes, this is the boundaries, the map is a tool for viewing and then like yeah, all the different NICs, the administrative, the boundaries. I know that like, yeah, if you are not the parents, 
you don't know what's the your education like yeah what's the school district i don't know like yeah there's like yeah so and then this boundary map is really cool so because you can overlay different boundaries in the one map so i know my zip code but actually i don't know what's my council number so like yeah and then that's like yeah and if you are like new immigrant new to the city but this one is really like yeah cool too trying so this one so let's start like yeah and yeah you can see all these different the boundaries and then there is like school district and here and then you can type in your address in here so you can see where you end up here oops yes and Oh, okay. I didn't know this function. This is even cool. So, like, yeah, this one, I think, yeah, in this school district vibe, like, uh, how they are like intersect with the different the boundaries. So, yes. So, this is where I learned a lot of the new boundaries, like assembly district. And then if you click your like yeah, state assembly district. Like yeah, this is how, like, like community district. This is shared by Queens Community Board seven, eight, and eleven. So and then there is like yeah, what's the portion of the each community district in this state assembly? Yeah, there's so many cool tools. Like yeah, and yes. This data to go NIC is like yeah is is online mapping and then that this one is like created by like nonprofit like yeah the Measure of the America of the Social Science Research Council they also like compiled like from the federal state and then city data to show like yeah the what's the like status of the neighborhood with the different indicators and. Then we got the NIC is the portal which aggregated various data set from the NIC open data and provide some profile of the New York City government agencies and then capital project. And this is also like run by nonprofit organization. And yes, and then this NIC connector, this is created by Coding for Impact, a student group based in the New York City at the Hunter College High School. So they like this one is like they pull the locations of the various social service site from the open data set and then compile them and then make one single map. So as you see, there is like yeah, where is all this food assistant service I located in the downtown Brooklyn area. So they just compiled all the service, service, social service location data on the one map. And then this one is the New York City restaurant violation. This is also created by like independent web developer. He's like using DOHMH's the violation and then and then aggregated that data by like restaurant and then date. So you can see the inspection history of the any restaurant. So like, yeah, you can pick the any restaurant and then all the histories of the violation inspection result in the one place. So that is also created. And then this one is another version of the street the three data set, what I view is like a more interactive the mapping with the locations of the, it's more like point map where the, all the trees are located and the, each tree is the information. But this one is more like yeah, the aggregated number of the trees by borough and then the types of the trees. So you can see like number of the trees on the Bronx and then I guess like Manhattan, Staten Island, and then or like each bar like break down by different types of the like the the map. So that's how this one is created. And then yeah, I believe this is the last one. And then this is tool that allow you to look up some parking and then camera violation. And this is also created like independent developers. 
And yes, and then this is what we like, yeah, is one hour of the discovery sections. And then now it's time to, if you have any questions and then I can answer the question. But now I noticed we have a lot of things are going on on the chat. So I don't know, Jesse, is there any questions? we should address now? Yes, um, there's one in particular from MS who asked, what tech stack does open data use behind the scenes? Are you familiar with that one? Oh, uh, the tech stacks? No, maybe, just can you help me to answer the question? I'm not quite sure since I don't work for a city agency, I'm not sure of their internal processes, but it's something that I can bring to my team who do work for city agencies. Any other questions? Yeah. If you want to raise your hand, we can unmute you as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what's up? Hi. Go ahead. Uh, thank you so much for the session today. Um, I'm currently studying data analytics, and I was just looking forward to making connections for like possible internships, entry level positions. And so I find myself um, wanting to know uh, more information about that. Like, how is there like a website that may like detail those available positions, or should you just research and reach out to the that's a great question. Um, thank you so much for asking. Um, one way you can get connected with folks and like job opportunities and internships is by joining Beta NYC Slack. Um, I'm dropping a link in the chat. Um, Beta.nyc slash links takes you to a bunch of other links, but if you join our chat, we're pretty active in um, having a monthly newsletter as well as like a weekly roundup where we post um, different events and different internships and job opportunities. Any other questions? Go ahead, Matthew. No audio is coming through to me, Matthew, if you're speaking. Hmm. Yeah, we still cannot hear you. Yes. Hmm. Oh, man. If you'd want to put your question in the chat, Matthew, we could still answer it that way. I'm sorry we can't hear you. Um, we have another question from MS. Have you seen open data be used to change legislation in the city? It's a really good question. Um, mm -hmm. Sue Jean, do you have any answers? Mm. No, I cannot think of the, like, yeah, there should be, I don't know, like, yeah, but yeah, nothing on top of my mind right now. Yeah. I know that a lot of community community organizations use um, open data sets to uh, hold government agencies accountable, um, but I don't know any particular legislation. Oh, Anne has an answer. The NYC Council data team uses it on our own legislative directive, and our own legislative director does as well. Thank you, Anne. Oh. Any other questions? Ah, Kathleen, I see you have your hand raised. I'm going to ask you to unmute. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, okay. Anyone else? And I just put in the link. I, I found actually like to answer to the MS question, is there any changing from the open data? Actually, I saw that like uh, this year, many nonprofit advocacy like group is going to present their work with the open data. So I just put like yeah, the specific like event from the like yeah, the 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 citizens committee for children of the New York City, and then they going to present how they using the open data for their advocacy work. They might be like yeah, you might be interested to join, and then like yeah, I personally yeah, plan to join, and they really want to hear how the nonprofit or advocacy group is using the open data. So you can find some use cases from them. Any other questions? Could be about filtering, visualizing, how to find data sets on the open data portal. Kathleen, that's a great question. 
Um, Kathleen said, you previously gave us a link if we run into technical issues. Um, maybe we could segue to the next section, Sujin, on how to stay in touch and reaching the open data help desk. Yes, sure, yes. Awesome. All right. Um, so definitely keep this link handy, um, nyc.gov slash askopendata. Um, oh, Sujin, I think the slide went away. Mm -hmm. Can you see? Yes, excellent. Thank you. Um, but this is where you get a hold of the NYC open data team. Um, if you run into any errors in a data set, if you have a question about data sets, um, a lot of the questions that you asked today, uh, you could put in here and they will get back to you within two weeks. Yeah. Um, and then maybe let's go to the next slide. Awesome. So um, this isn't the only event that you can attend. Open Data Week is still happening. Um, please attend other events um, that you're interested in. If you're like, oh my gosh, this is my first discovering NYC Open <laughs> Data session and I wanna see another one um, just so I can get more familiar. Uh, I definitely recommend that. I've been to many of these classes and I feel like I learn something new every time. Um, uh, hope to see you on Saturday during the NYC School of Data. Um, and Beta Bagels is another series where um, New York City offices present their recent or upcoming work that has to do with uh, technology, data, or design. And the National Civic Day of Hacking is where we bring our community together to take actions. And then one last slide. Yeah. And then again, just like I mentioned earlier, here's another way that you can stay in touch with us. I work for Beta NYC, which is a civic, a civic tech uh, nonprofit. Um, we love to get folks together. So if you want to stay in the community um, and still stay in touch, please join our Slack, uh, subscribe to our newsletter, and attend our events. Awesome. OK. And it looks like we still have some questions, Sujin. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think, Jesse, I think is this easy question for you? Can you explain what's the relationship between Beta NIC and the open data NIC? Yes. Oh my gosh, yes. Uh, that's a great question. So we partner with um, the city of the Office of Technology and Innovation, which is a government agency, and Beta NYC is a civic tech nonprofit. Um, and we come together to collaborate to create the Open Data Ambassadors Program, which is um, this program, and we create this curriculum together. We also run Open Data Week together, as well as School of Data. But yeah, two separate entities, just collaborators. Mm -hmm. And I think we, the last question from Anne is, what does the NIC Open Data Project submission turnaround time look like? I have no idea exactly, yeah. Oh, the NYC Open Data Project Submission Turnaround Time. Yes, it's like. the, like, yeah, the project gallery. That's a great question. I'm not sure how what the turnaround time is either, but that's something um, to ask the Open Data Desk um, help desk for sure, uh, because they review those submissions. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, thank you for joining. And then hope everyone enjoy the rest of the Open Data Week. And then, yeah, have a great evening. Have a great evening. Thank you so much for attending.